Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. A few weeks ago, I made a video on Cameco, which is one of my largest uranium equity positions, uh, specifically as it relates to uranium in my energy portfolio. Now, um, a lot of people watched that one. Many people commented on it. Many people expressed some fears and reservations about uh, uranium or nuclear energy in general. And uh, a couple of uh, the comments prompted me to make this follow-up video. So uh, what I thought I would do is uh, do a quick five by five side by side comparison, including uranium um, stocks that are not only in my portfolio, but also some that you might want to add to your watch list or some that might be of interest to you, right? So I'm comparing five uranium equities and once again, these things are the same, but different, right? So uh, one needs to do a little bit of due diligence and make sense of what it is that you want to invest in and where you want to allocate capital before you make any investment whatsoever. But first, let's check in with the channel. So um, one of our friends here, uh, Bulldogs number one, or as he now calls himself, MS State Bulldog, um, mentioned that he has sold most of his UR URG before the crash. They issued new share of stock for cash flow improvement, which greatly diluted the total share value and caught me flat footed. You can't win them all best. Well, you know, that's just unfortunately the nature of the game, right? Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Hopefully we can win more than what we lose. And at the end of the day, you know my rules, right? Rule number one is don't lose money. And rule number two is don't forget rule number one, right? So uh, Jerry made a comment here. And uh, this is more the sort of macro thesis as it relates to the market in general, right? Uh, great job. He's talking about uh, my chemical video here. I would be afraid that the Ukrainian war, which the nuclear reactor was almost hit by the desperate Ukrainians, right? So he's talking about the, the obviously the, the war in Ukraine right now. And um, this is not a good situation. Hopefully there's going to be an end to it soon, but I don't see the end to it soon because ironically, or unfortunately, it's not ironic at all, but none of our world leaders is actually looking to broker some kind of a peace deal. It's more like the warmongering military industrial complex just wants to keep it going uh, for reasons that are best known to them. I just hope at the end of the day that this thing goes away sooner rather than later. I've pretty much had enough and uh, I don't think the world has any reason to be at war unless the bankers want to be at war. So um, Jerry adds, I own two uranium positions but they are small. Well, that's uh, that's probably a good thing, Jerry, if you want to uh, take a high risk, high vol volatility type of position in any equity, rather keep it small that you're comfortable uh, and make sure that it's money that you can afford to lose if you had to. But he makes a comment here saying, my biggest fear in the uranium space is causing me to go very long on gold mining stocks. Well, that's uh, not a bad thesis at all, uh, especially if it's gold mining as opposed to gold bars, right? Because gold mines actually uh, companies that produce and uh, hopefully generate ongoing revenue and free cash flow and profitability on an ongoing basis. So not a bad place to put money when there's high risk and high volatility. At least have some gold mining stocks in your portfolio as well. Because debt, uh, this is a big macro problem, right? Everybody's indebted to everybody. Runaway government spending, that's just over the top. I mean, the people who are in government, doesn't matter in which country in the world you are while you're watching this video, you probably will agree that your government is spending way, way, way too much money on stuff that uh, perhaps is not something you voted for and maybe things that they should not be spending money on. BRICS, so Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and the launch of the new currency, which uh, already 159 countries said that they would support central banks buying gold, right? So you can buy gold as well, or you can buy some gold mining stocks as Jerry does. I have some gold mining stocks too and possibly interest rate cuts coming sooner. So if there's an interest rate cut, uh, stocks will probably artificially inflate again. So that might be good from a long stock position, but at the end of the day, not necessarily good for the economy on a macro basis. So let's take a look at these five stocks and I put them in alphabetical order. So it, uh, it's easy for you to keep track of what I'm talking about. So Cameco is a stock I've been in for several years now. Uh, so it's one of my largest positions in uh, uranium or nuclear energy or however you want to slice and dice this thing. And then you can see I've comparing, I'm have i comparing it here to Denison Mines. So Cameco is a uranium miner. Denison is a uranium miner. Paladin is a uranium miner. So Denison and Cameco are both in Canada. Uh, Paladin is an Australian-based company, but their assets, their mining assets are primarily in Namibia, uh, in Southern Africa for now, but they've just made an 
um, a bid to acquire fission uranium in Canada, which is also a position that I have just a small position in fission uranium, URG. So our friend, British, uh, the Bulldog, uh, mentioned this one, UR Energy, and then UUUU, which comes up quite often, energy fuels, right? So uh, you can trade all of these basically uh, on the New York Stock Exchange, with the exception of Paladin, which is an OTC because there's an Australian company, so you have to buy an OTC, which means over-the-counter. Mining companies, mining miscellaneous, etc., they're sort of the same. And then mining non-ferrous for energy fuels. So if we look at the 20-day raw stochastic, so the interesting thing here is that as a general rule, when your 20-day raw stochastic dips below 20, then the stock is hopelessly oversold and you could probably uh, initiate a position or look to uh, add it at least to your watch list to maybe start buying. And you can see we have a couple that are close to 20 and the rest of them are below 20. So if your guideline is a technical indicator like the 20-day raw stochastic, you may want to initiate or look at initiating positions in UUUU. So energy fuels, UR energy, which now is a buy probably, and Denison Mines um, arguably is a buy um, based on the 20-day raw stochastic. But if we dig just a little bit deeper, you look at the price earnings ratio down here and uh, it shows you right now is probably not a good time to get into Cameco with a price earnings ratio of 67. Denison is at 24, which is quite high and the others don't feature because they don't have a price earnings ratio because they haven't had any profitable revenue. And then if we look at the analyst analysts up here at the top, you can see that the uh, sentiment has changed quite significantly. Uh, a couple of months ago, a month ago, people were still saying buy. Now almost everybody says sell, 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 sell. Now, there's another way to look at this. If you don't want to look at the technical indicators or the fundamentals, you can say, I'm going to follow the Warren Buffett rule, which is I'm going to buy when everyone else is selling and I'm going to sell when everyone else is buying, right? So uh, it's difficult to find fault with Warren Buffett's thesis or um, investment narratives because at the end of the day, he's probably uh, richer than what we are and maybe even wealthier than all of us collectively. Anyway, if we look at the next dividend date coming up, because only one of them pay a dividend, but it's meaningless, uh, September, sorry, November the 29th, Cameco, uh, the dividend is so small, it's completely irrelevant, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, as you know by now, I always look at the sort of sales to book as a comparison. I've got a $2 billion company here in terms of sales with a $17 billion market capitalization. So there's a huge delta between what they generate in revenue and their market cap right now. So um, I've basically sort of resisted the temptation of even adding to my Cameco position. Cameco, in theory, uh, is overpriced. Now, I say in theory because my cost basis is so low that I'm quite happy just to hold it because I've had the position for quite a number of years. Uh, but I wanna, wouldn't want to initiate a new position in Cameco right now. Denison is completely different in this regard because it's generating 1.3 billion in sales and it's got a market cap of only 1.3 billion. Market cap, in case you can't remember, or market valuation is the total number of shares multiplied by the current stock price, right? So we have a $1.3 billion company in revenue and a $1.3 billion company in market cap. So let me just pause here for a second and tell you what it is that I'm talking about. So if you um, own a company, like let's say for instance, you own a McDonald's and you generate a million dollars in sales per year. Now I'm gonna assume that if you uh, are generating a million dollars in sales per year from your McDonald's fast food outlet or restaurant or whatever you want to call it, and you want to sell it, you could probably try to get a multiple on revenue, right? Not one-to-one. -one. In other words, if I have a company that generates a million dollars in revenue, I might want to you know, put it out there and say it's for sale, but I want at least 1.5 or $2 million. So maybe I can, <clears throat> excuse me, get like a 2X on my annual revenue, right? So I got a $1 million company and I'm going to try and sell it for $2 million. The other way to do it is to say, uh, what is your net earnings, right? And your net earnings might be, let's say $200,000 per year. So on the million dollars I do in revenue, I'm actually making 20%, which is $200,000 per year in, uh, in, in, in profit, right? So net profit. So uh, what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put a 10X multiple on my net profit and 10 times 200 would be 2 million. So I wanna sell the company at at least two times um, what I'm currently generating in revenue, right? So that's why this is important to me because here I have a company that's actually generating, using my example, 1.3 billion, and it has a market cap of only 1.3 billion, right? So I don't have any sales for Paladin. And the reason for that is they were stockpiling 
uranium, right? So they weren't selling anything because the price was low, but they have started production. So they've been adding to their uh, stockpile of uranium. And of course, the uranium price is not bad right now. And in fact, um, they have actually moved, as I said at the beginning, to, uh, to acquire fission uranium in Canada, which will make them one of the larger uranium mining companies on the planet. And they'll have assets in Canada and in Namibia. So right now, I don't have a revenue number for Paladin, but I sure do for Denison Mine. So this is one that you might want to add to watch this for sure. And I have another example here. I have UR Energy, 17 billion, right? And then you look at the market cap, it's so low. And energy fuels, 38 billion almost. And the market cap, once again, very, very low, right? So I want to look at these companies and say, like, how do they compare in terms of sales to book? How much energy... Um, is it that they, sorry, how much product is it that they are mining and selling? How much revenue are they generating compared to what their market valuation is? Based on that metric, Denison Mines for sure looks like a potential uh, buy or even, as I said, something you want to add to your watch list. If we look at the uh, performance of these companies over the past one year on, uh, on a graph, then you can see Paladin has outperformed most of them, right? So Paladin is actually a stock. I have some videos in my library dating back to Paladin when it was trading at 40 cents, 60 cents, whatever. Now it's trading at, you know, six, seven, eight dollars. So it's moved significantly from where it was a couple of years ago. So if you've been long in Paladin for like three or four years or so, and you've been following the channel and you were trading along with me or, or following some of the um, examples that I was using, you will know that uh, people who are long in Paladin uh, have been making a lot of money despite the fact that it's pulled back so sharply in terms of where the stock price is today. We'll look at the stock price in just a minute. For the rest of them, there's some gross underperformance here. And you can see the two, as uh, Bulldogs mentioned, uh, URG and, of course, Energy Fuels, which is one that many people ask me and comment about, um, has not been a good performer at all. The other two have kind of been okay. But Paladin, for sure, has been the best performer by far. So let's look at these quickly, just as a as a snapshot here. If I look at Cameco, you can currently buy it. So Cameco has uh, two ticker symbols. CCJ is on the New York Stock Exchange and CCO is on the uh, Canadian Stock Exchange. You can buy Cameco on the US exchange for about, let's call it 40 bucks. Over the past year, it's uh, bounced up and down. And as recently as in May, it was at $55 per share. So it might go down some more. And in fact, right now, I actually think it's somewhat overvalued. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't moved to open new positions in any of our accounts that we manage in Cameco. And I've only just held my own position as well. I don't want to buy Cameco right now, even at $39. It seems too expensive. I don't know where it's going to go. I remember, you know, there was a story I read once where uh, somebody had asked JP Morgan, the famous banker, uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank, um, they asked him one day, what is the stock market going to do tomorrow? And he said, it's going to go up. If it doesn't go up, it will go down. That's about as much as what we know. And you can see on the peer comparison down here at the bottom, Denison Mines is actually one of the peer comparisons because it's a uranium mining company. The dividend, as I said, is insignificant. So you're not buying Cameco for its dividend. You're buying it for its uptick. Now, I like Denison Mines because in addition to the fact that um, the indicators look reasonably good on Denison Denison also has no debt and they have some great assets. So um, this stock price currently at a buck 53 compared to uh, its high just a couple of months ago of 242 shows some upside there. And you can see one of its peer compar comparisons is energy fuels. Uh, I would rather add Denison mines to my watch list than energy fuels. The PE ratio, as I said, is a little bit high, but uh, right now I think uh, at a buck 53, it's either a buy or something you can add to your watch list. Now, Paladin Energy, as I said a few minutes ago, many people have been following the channel and they've been with me since I was talking about Paladin when it was trading at 40 cents, 60 cents, etc. Uh, if you earned it at 60 cents, you're up 10x. Uh, more than that, it's uh, almost trading at $7 despite the fact that it's come down. But just a couple of months ago, it was trading at 12 bucks. Now they've just moved to acquire Fission Uranium, which I highlighted down here at the bottom, which is actually trading at below a dollar per share. So uh, the amalgamated company should get some uptick there. And we're not sure what the final price is going to be, what they're going to pay for fission uranium. But I think the deal is going to go through and they'd be able to successfully execute on that deal too. Paladin is uh, certainly one you, you should watch. Uh, I wouldn't buy it right now at $7. If you have an existing position like I do, you could potentially add to it. 
uh, just to average out your cost basis, but I wouldn't initiate a new position in Paladin Energy right now. Energy Fuels, on the other hand, is one where you might say it's pulled back so much and so sharply that now might be a decent time to get in. You can buy it for around four bucks fifty. It's come off a high of almost nine dollars, so it's down almost fifty percent from that high, which it was at in September of last year. I mean, it's almost a year ago now. It was nine dollars, and now it's at four dollars fifty. So it's lost half of its value. Is it going to go down, or is it going to go up more? I don't know. Uh, if you guys know, or if you have an idea, you can tell me. But you can see it's come uh, peer compar competitors or comparison down at the bottom include Cameco and Denison Mines. And then the last one, UR Energy, currently is trading at about a buck. Now, as recently as May, at the end of May, it was trading at almost two bucks. So it's down 50% as well. And obviously it tanked, as Bulldogs explained to us at the beginning of this video, when I read his quote to you, uh, why it's gone down, you can see its competitors down here, UEC, which is one many people talk about, especially on Twitter as well. Um, uh, UEC comes up all the time along with you are energy and energy fuels, you, 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 you. Um, so I, I'm not too sure about these ones, right? So um, I, I would say uh, in terms of the five that I'm sharing with you here, uh, my position in chemical, I would just hold. I definitely will uh, add Denison Mines. In fact, I have it on my watch list, so I'll, I'll be following that one along. I already own Paladin, and I actually have a little position in Fission Uranium as well, so I'll have to see what, what ends up with that one. Uh, nobody knows, I'm not sure. Uh, energy fuels and UR energy, is it a buy right now or should you just stay away? I don't know, man. This uh, uranium market has been so volatile and you can see the uh, sort of peaks and valleys here. Three of them have kind of trended equally. Paladin had this huge spike and UR energy had this huge drop, you know, so um, I'm not too sure. Um, sorry, and energy fuels had this huge drop. So I'm not too sure sort of about these two energy fuels and UR energy. If you feel confident or if you feel and think uh, you have something that can uh, provide some guidance to us, then please share in the comments and uh, we can chat about it there. So um, yeah, I don't know. I'll hold my Cameco, uh, I'll hold my Paladin and uh, definitely add Denison Mines to my watch list for uh, something which I might want to buy. Maybe uh, your, um, your buy, say if you want to put a stop limit in it, like a buck 25 or something like that, if it falls, you get lucky, right? Um, anyway. Denison, definitely keep it on your watch list. Just some recent news, right? So uh, Denison increased balance sheet strength, 400 million Canadian dollars in cash, physical uranium and investments and debt-free. Uh, wonderful company, um, even at a buck 54. You may want to take a little whirl here, but don't jump in boots and all. If you uh, want to open a position in Denison mind, uh, just take it easy and uh, play with, uh, with money that you are prepared to lose because we don't know where this one is going. A little bit of news uh, on fission uranium. Debbie Bester here tweeted on, uh, on, on, on X or posted on X, second leading independent proxy advisory firm endorses Fission Uranium's proposed arrangement with Paladin Energy, right? So that's the acquisition I'm talking about. It looks as if Paladin is going to be successful in acquiring Fission Uranium. So uh, all in all, I'd say I'm, I'm reasonably bullish on uh, uranium. I definitely am bullish on uh, nuclear energy, uh, but man, it's been... Uh, slow 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 uh not even so slow and steady just slow right it's kind of like wading through mud in terms of trying to get some bailout on uh, some of the uh market moves on uh nuclear energy and as it uh equates to uranium mining so uh let me know what you guys think in the comments and we can uh, discuss it a little bit more there thanks for watching talk to you soon bye-bye